in Church of Christ. If you are visiting with us, we're certainly glad to have you with us. And if you've visited more than once, we're, we're really glad to have you with us too. Um, we're studying in the book, uh, Excellence in Praise and Worship. I got a paper version, but it's a green book. We are on lesson, which one? 2.5, Devoted to the Public Reading of Scripture. And we're going to start that lesson in just a minute, but I've asked Matt if he will uh, word of prayer for us before we get started. That's all now. Our God and Father in heaven, we thank you for allowing us to come here this morning. We thank you for our health. We thank you for the rest that we got last night. We ask that you please be with us this morning as we study your word. Help us to draw closer to you and draw closer to each other so that your kingdom might be strengthened. God, we ask you to please be with those who are not able to be here this morning due to health issues. And please help them to recover quickly. Help them to return to us so that we might be able to be with them again. Lord, please help us to be an encouragement to all those that we are around this week. Help us to bring others to you. We pray all these things in your son's name. Amen. Amen. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. I have sworn and confirmed that I will keep your righteous judgments. I am afflicted very much. Revive me, O Lord, according to your word. Accept, I pray, the free will offerings of my mouth, O Lord, and teach me your judgments. My life is continually in my hand, yet I do not forget your law. The wicked have laid a snare for me, yet I have not strayed from your precepts. Your testimonies I have taken as a heritage forever, for they are the rejoicing of my heart. I have inclined my heart to perform your statutes forever to the very end. The reading of public scripture. Public reading of scripture. Does anybody know what I just read from? Psalms 119. Psalms 119, 105 through 112. What do you get from that scripture? Now, you didn't have a chance to follow along with me unless you were really good and that was familiar with you and you were able to go find it. But what do you get from Psalms 119, 105 through 112? What do you get? God's word guides us. Okay, absolutely. It's a real good summary of what it's basically saying. And it's really important. And it's guided us from the beginning. And will continue to guide us. It'll always be there for us. One of the things that was pointed out in the lesson is if you ranked everything that we do in the worship service, where does reading fall in there? Probably toward the end, maybe, somebody might say. I mean, when you think of all the things that happen, you think about the prayers that are offered, you think about the singing that we participate in, you think about all the things that we do, do we really give the attention that we should to the reading of Scripture? Yeah, and Erthel was right. Study to show thyself approved. I mean, that's a, that's a big part of what we're going to talk about tonight in addition to what happened with regard to the reading of public scripture and the history of how that has happened, but also the responsibility that we individually have about what we, what we do. How many scriptures do we actually read in the worship service? Well, we generally we have scriptures that are read in class, that are associated with class, like in this class, we have a key text 
always. This time it is 1 Timothy 4, 11 through 16. We will refer to other scriptures and we will read them while we're in class. If you looked at the lesson, there's a number of scriptures that are referred to there, but that's not public reading of scripture. But here, it's generally, you know, for a number of years now, the elders have said, okay, we're going to have a scripture reading that's going to help us to focus on the theme for the year. And all of this year, uh, that's one of the things we've done with regard to the theme of what's God's purpose for me. And so we've read a scripture at the beginning of the service when we get ready to start a worship service. But there's also a scripture reading that is read that's been predetermined for uh, that time period. Uh, we have a song, we'll have a scripture reading, and we'll have a prayer, and then the other acts of worship that we participate in. Like I was saying, we do this, and you know, why do you think we do that? We've got a theme. We say the theme is what's God's purpose for me. We've got a specific scripture that we're reading at that time. And we're even, you know, we even ask for people to stand when we read that scripture. Referring to Nehemiah 8, 5, I think it is. Why do, why do you think we read that scripture? Jim Whiteside. think the anticipation of, of what we're going to be getting. The anticipation of what we're going to be getting, how it helps you to kind of prepare your mind. And really, I mean, we've talked about this before in this class. There are things that can be distracting to us. And, and you know, that's just part of it. I mean, if you're, a, if you're a young parent and you've got young children, you're dealing with that and trying to and, and bless you for bringing them. Bless you for having them here and dealing with that. But because that's part of it. Somebody did that for us uh, before we had the opportunity to be here. So, you know, that's just part of it. But what are the other distractions with regard to what Jim's talking about? We have that scripture to help us focus. And when public reading was really one of the only things that they had, um, you know, that, that, was a, that was certainly a focus and a conviction issue too. And so, yes, we want everyone to focus on a specific uh, scripture so that we can make sure that we uh, are thinking about that theme, what's God's purpose for me, and then how that scripture can cause us to consider that thought. LR. Well, I, want, I really appreciate that happening, uh, the, the reading of scripture by the elders. Uh, I think it sets a tone. I agree with Jim a thousand percent. It, it sets a tone, uh, you know, that we are in a place where we come together with God's children. This is a holy time. Well, all of our times are holy, but we're this particular is a time we devote to God and his word is holy and that we're setting a tone for this worship of, of setting this aside and it's a holy time. All the cares of the world are outside. We're here about God. You know, in the, in the synagogues and the temple when they read scripture on those scrolls and they still do this today in... Uh, uh, in, in synagogues they used a stylus they wouldn't touch it, the scroll they used a stylus as they read from it not because the scroll the paper on the scroll was anything but the words were holy and they did that because they didn't want human contact with those holy words of God it was just the way they respected the word and uh, it's, not a, it's not commanded but it was just their respect and I think when you guys are doing this I think it's calling to our attention these words are holy. They're from our God, and it focuses that on our mind. That's a good point, and later I'm going to talk about this too, but what about men that are responsible for reading that scripture, like the one that we do where we have a song, we read a scripture, we have a prayer? What kind of, you know, and I, like I say, I've got that later in the lesson, but you brought it up so I can go that way just a minute. How, how important is it for men to prepare themselves when they are reading the scripture. Again, if we, if we don't think it's very important, then how much effort do we really put into it? Right? So that's an important thing for us to think about as well. Okay, so 
What were some of the challenges that you think people might have had with regard to God's Word in biblical times and having its availability and the importance of reading Scripture in a public way? Tom? Not everybody had it. Not everybody had it. Access and availability. What do you think another thing was? Literacy. Literacy and access, those were both things that were problems. Literacy rates, uh, some of the research I did said that the, uh, the literacy rate was probably around 10 or 15% as far as people could actually read. And really as late as 1820, it was only about 12%. Uh, literacy rate today worldwide is around 91%. Uh, and even today... If you cannot read, you've got, you've got it on audio. You can listen to an app. You can uh, get access to it in so many different ways. But those were a couple of, of the reasons. You know, the other was access, as Tom said. Not everybody had access to it. Religious leaders, uh, people that had money, those are the people that had access to it. But that was not, uh, that, of course, that's different today. Okay, 1 Timothy 4, 16, 11 through 16. Let's look at that for just a minute. Whoops, where are we? Okay, Gerald. You, you know, and that, that's something I, I really picked up on as I've studied Jesus and, and his teachings. Jesus taught in story form. So it was something you could hear and you could remember and retell the story. He didn't do it in some doctoral thesis that's really complex that nobody could remember. It was simple, it was a story, and you could retell it. Yeah, that's a good point, and uh, yeah, it's something that people could relate to a lot uh, in the parables or in other ways that he taught. That was certainly something that was important too. So again, our key text is 1 Timothy 4, 11 through 16. If you don't mind, go ahead and turn your Bibles over there and you can read that with me. We'll take a look at that. 1 Timothy 4, 11 through 16. These things command and teach, let no one despise your youth. Just a minute. Yes. Let no one despise your youth, but be an example to believers in word, in conduct, in love, in spirit, in faith, in purity. Till I come, give attention to reading, to exhortation, to doctrine. Do not neglect the gift that is in you, which was given to you by prophecy with the laying on of hands of the presbytery. Meditate on these things. Give yourself entirely to them, that your progress may be evident to all. Take heed to yourself. And to the doctrine, continue in them. For doing this, you will save both yourself and those who hear you. And if you read <clears throat> from the New American Standard Version, it says that the, the, the interpretation is a little bit different. And when he gets into verse 13, he says, Until I come, give attention to the public reading of Scripture, to exhortation and teaching. Do not neglect the spiritual gift which is in you. Uh, and then take pains with these things. Be absorbed in them so that your progress will be evident to all. Verse 16, pay a close attention to yourself and to your teaching, preserving these things. For as you do, this you will ensure salvation both for yourself and for those who hear you. So, what we have going on here is with regard to the, uh, the importance of Scripture and the impact that it's going to have in the lives of other people. Basically, what he is telling him is stay on point. Do what you're supposed to do. Uh, make sure that your life reflects everything that you've been taught. He says also to do that in such a way that folks are going to be encouraged by your life, by your teaching, and don't stray from the labor, the labor which has been put before you. Paul continues to admonish Timothy also in regard to this work. And he says, you know, this is something that has been put at your charge, but by your speech and your conduct and everything that you do in your life, you're going to be the example that people need to see, but also you read to them for them to be able to learn as well. And finally, in verse 13, what we were talking about there just a minute ago, he talks about the reading. He specifically says, exhort and teach through the reading of the scripture, 
but don't be negligent. Make sure that you are absorbed with and those who hear you will also be as well. The next example I want to look at that's pointed out in the book is Exodus, the 24th chapter, and verses 3 through 8. It's another example of the importance of public scripture reading. The covenant was divinely revealed to God through the law of Moses. Moses told them what God expected of them. Uh, the people accepted God's word in verse 7. If you look at uh, Exodus 24, 3 through 8, and all that the Lord has said, we will do and be obedient. And they made that commitment to obey the law after Moses read it to them. And it shows the power of the written word and for those that heard it. And so sometimes people hear it and they stray away. And that happened many times with God's people. Does that happen today? Do people hear the word and stray away? Why does that happen? Why do you think it happens that we hear the word and we stray away? Our heart's in the wrong place. We're, we're focused on other things other than what we need to be. And we have scripture reading that is public reading today, but not to the degree that they had in that period of time. Another example that's in the lesson is uh, Joshua 8, 30 through 35. So Moses passes on the responsibility God does through Moses' actions in Joshua 8, 30 through 35 to lead the people into the promised land. And if you go over to uh, Joshua, another thing that was real striking to me in, in this reading uh, of looking at this scripture is the first chapter in verses 1 through 9. Look at that with me, if you will, and think about the responsibility that was put on Joshua. Joshua 1, 1 through 9. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spoke to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' assistant, saying, just imagine God speaking to you and think of the reverence you hear what he has to say and the responsibility that he's putting on you. Think about that and think about that in Joshua's shoes. Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise, go over this Jordan, you and all this people, to the land which I am giving to them, the children of Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon, I have given to you, as I said to Moses, from the wilderness in this Lebanon, as far as the great river, the, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, to the great sea, toward the going down of the sun, shall be your territory. No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life, as I will as I was with Moses, so I will be with you, and I will not leave you nor forsake you. Be strong and of good courage, for, this, uh, for to this people you shall divide an inheritance, the land which I swore to their fathers to give them. Only be strong and very courageous, that you may observe to do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left, that you may prosper wherever you go. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid, nor be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Can you imagine being Joshua and having that message from God back here yes sir in answering that question you asked earlier why do some read and not heed or, or follow we have find ourselves <clears throat> we can probably look at the answer that James writes in James chapter 1 verse 24 through uh, 25. You know, we put ourselves either in one of two categories as what you have just read. Either we're a doer or one, you know, James reflects on that we're like a person who looks in the mirror, <coughs> sees who sees himself and sees what kind of person he is, you know, and then but walks away and forgets, uh, forgets that message or forgets that, that notion. Right. 
No, and, and again, think about the responsibility of Joshua and what God said to him and how he took on that responsibility. Right? I was just going to say, we do have this commission. This commission is, was to Joshua, but to now it's to us. And, you know, the Lord said, everywhere that your feet touch is your territory. The book and the law has been given to us. It says, be strong and of good courage for this people you shall divide as an inheritance the land which I swore their fathers to give them. That's us now. Right. And so I feel like a lot of times we don't think of, you know, think of it like that. You know, we're limited to what we think, and um, we definitely, this commission has been given to us now. Okay, thanks. Anybody else? Well, in 8 and 34 and 35 of Joshua, 8, 34 and 35, Joshua did all that God and Moses told him to do, and he read the law before the people because of his faith and his courage and his charge to do what God had had him to do. After Joshua, 2 Kings 22, 8 through 13, there was a period of approximately 800 years where the word of God was not being read. Uh, Hilkiah, the high priest, brought to King Josiah the book of the law. In 22 and 8, Saphon, the scribe, reads the book of the law, and then he goes back, and in verse 10, he reads the book of the law in the presence of the king. And when the king hears the book of the law read, what does he do? He tears his clothes, and why did he do that? He was distressed. Why? For not pleasing God, for the state that they were in with regard to uh, God's will and God's word. And so what did he do? He set about trying to do everything that he could to fix what had been undone or not done uh, with regard to the word of, the God, uh, word of God uh, because uh, of the departure of the people from it. And he did the best that he could to make things right. Do we have the chance of falling into danger of not being moved by the word of God just because we've got such easy access to it? Do we make everything a priority in our life and we don't make God's word a priority in our life? Is that easy to do? Just, I mean, again, if you've got such easy access to things in life, then is it easy to forget about other things? Brad. Sure. Jim, in, in all of these things you're talking about, going back, you know, into the Old Testament, if you come back in retrospect to 1 Timothy 4, that verse 13, that phrase that says public reading of Scripture, I know what public reading of scripture is. It means per public reading of scripture. That's simple. It meant more than that to them. In the Greek it meant not only did you read that publicly, it meant an accurate understanding of what you were reading. That's why the people, that's why we, you know, the, the scripture only does two things. It either draws you to it or, or pushes you away from it. That's the only two effects that it has. Those people understood what that, what that phrase meant in their language it doesn't really come through in English but you know that may be why it doesn't mean quite as much to us well it's just getting up and reading scripture it's not just getting up and reading scripture it's getting up and reading scripture but understanding exactly what that scripture means and how to apply it and, and that I mean and that convicts us yeah absolutely it should. It should yeah it should it should and that goes back to the point of having to invest the time in it to know it and understand how it should convict us of the things that we need to do in our lives. In Nehemiah 8, 1 through 12, what happens? Another example of God's word. Um, God helps the Jews through Ezra and Nehemiah to return. The temple's rebuilt. The wall's restored around the city. And whoever all the people was, as it talks about in Nehemiah 8, 1 through 12, they gathered, and it says, in a square, as one in unity of purpose, and requested God's word to be read. And in verse 3, it reads, from early morning until midday, all the people were attentive. And that kind of goes to the point that Brad was making there, too, with regard to wanting to hear what was said and being convicted of of what they were saying in verses 9 and 12 it says that they were convicted when they heard that they were convicted when they heard the word of the law and from that point forward it appears that the public reading of scripture became a regular part a more regular part of what was being done 
in Luke, the fourth chapter, in verses 14 through 21, we have the example of Christ and his ministry. If you want to turn over to Luke 4 and 14 through 21, we'll take a look at that. Christ has become very well known in his ministry at this point. He's returned to his hometown, hometown of Nazareth and he goes to do what he would normally do. He enters the synagogue on the Sabbath day as part of what would always happen, the formal public worship. And he stood to read from the scroll and it's Isaiah 61. And if you look at Luke 4, 13 through 21, let's see, 14 through 21, excuse me. Then Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit to Galilee, and news of him went through all the surrounding region. And he taught in their synagogues, being glorified by all. So he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, and as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up to read. And he was handed the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And then he closed the book, he gave it back to the attendant, and he sat down. And the eyes of all who were there in the synagogue were fixed on him. And he began to say, today, this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. What was Christ's message with regard to public reading of, the, of Isaiah 61? What was he saying to them? Yeah, he's saying, it has been fulfilled. I am he. I am he. Today, this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. And how did they react to that? It says in verse... 20, initially their eyes were fixed on him. Well, what do you think that was? With their eyes being fixed on him, what do you think it was? Think it was awe of who he was? Probably, maybe, temporarily. <laughs> A realization. What, what happened later, though? Yeah, he said, hey, this is the carpenter's kid. That, that can't be Jesus. That's a carpenter's kid. They couldn't see him for who he was. They couldn't see him for who he was. But still it shows the power of the written and spoken word. But can you imagine being in the audience, audience and hearing that? It's hard to imagine. I can't know what that would be like. I just This is like it's hard to understand what it would be like to be Joshua and hear what God said to him. But the power of the scripture being read is an incredible thing, uh, for sure. Yes? And what's amazing, and you may get to this, and going along with Brad's point, Go ahead. What, what, what is so amazing is that Jesus many times says, those who have ears, let them hear. And it also is in, the, in, the, in some of the epistles as well. So either there were a lot of people missing ears in the first century, and I don't think that was the case because I right. don't read about that. Or there's a deeper meaning to that. And, and when public scripture is read, it's not just let it go in one ear and out the other like we do if someone tells us to take out the trash or to tells us to do a chore we don't want to do. We hear it, but we don't do anything with it. And when, when you know, scripture is read, he's saying here, those who have ears, let them hear. Yeah. And that means more than just going in your ears. Right. And the public reading of scripture is so closely tied to the private reading of scripture too and that's the other point that I want to get into as well because I think uh, it's it's important for us to be convicted through the public reading of scripture today as they were convicted because of a lack of access or because it had been forgotten for a period of time or whatever it might have been but it's not today it is here for us and it is important for us still to read scripture publicly we have special services sometimes where all we do is sing, read, and pray. And that is an effort on the elder's behalf to get us to focus our minds like Jim was talking about earlier on the things that we are singing, on the scriptures that are being read, 
and on the prayers that we have together one with another. And you know what's, what's sad is sometimes we'll announce that we're going to have a special service like that. And what happens? P attendance drops and people don't show up. Why would that be? Ryan says spiritual laziness. Or, well, I don't need that. You think that might be why somebody would do that? I, I don't need that. I'm <laughs> or maybe just a, a lack of understanding of how important it is for us to all be engaged in those thoughts, in those prayers, in the reading of those scriptures, in all that we are looking at together. So here's what I want us to think about now as it relates to and tie this all back into the public script reading of Scripture, but think about our individual responsibilities. When we think about reading Scripture, uh, how does it sustain us? Matthew 4.4, 4, what does that say? Anybody know? Right, right. It says... It is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. By every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. That is what is going to sustain us in our lives. So, you know, we've got to be committed to, to that. It's got to be important to us. Um, it takes reading God's word to sustain our spiritual bodies. And... Public reading of scripture should be an encouragement, I think. It should be uh, admonition. It should be a reinforcement of the things that we're already reading on our own, that we're looking at God's word. And like I say, because, you know, the lesson is focusing on public reading, but I think we've got to make sure that the individual reading of scripture is a critical part of us comprehending and implementing uh, what God intends for us to do. I think the other thing that it does for me is when I'll hear a public scripture read, a lot of times it'll reinforce something that I've read before or that I've thought about before, and it is helpful for me in that way as well. So what are things that sustain us? We talk about man cannot live by bread alone, but every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. So, everybody's taking in a little oxygen this morning, right? Tim, you taking in oxygen? Hope so. It looks like you are, otherwise you'd be blue. <laughs> you would not be the same color that you are right now. So, why is oxygen important to us? We've got to breathe. We have to have life to sustain our physical bodies. I mean, for us to be able to live, we have to be able to do that. Why do we eat food? Why is eating food important to you? Nourishment, nourishment John says, for the body. Is Diet Coke nourishment? No, Diet, Pepsi. Diet Pepsi is nourishment, <laughs> not Diet Coke. Okay, I got you. Whatever. Boy, they got you drinking the Kool-Aid. Uh, but why is nourishment important to our bodies? To sustain us. Our bodies have to have that to be sustained. So we breathe to be sustained physically. And we take on food and water to be sustained physically. And those are all the physical things of life. But what about the spiritual things of life? Matthew 4.4 4. Man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. And how do we know the mouth of God? The word of God. That's the only way we're going to continue to make it in this life. So, the bottom line is we should be certainly encouraged by public scripture reading. We are commanded to read scripture publicly. Those that have responsibilities, and that's, that's what I want to talk about a little bit too before, uh, before class is over this morning. Um, but on a scale of 1 to 10... If you think about how important scripture reading is, I mean, do you think any different about it after you've read through this lesson 
compared to maybe how you've thought about it before? And the other question with regard to giving attention to public scripture reading, you know, how much do we spend in our, how much time we spend in our Bible? And one of the, one of the thoughts was if, if you just read a verse in the morning from a Bible app, then does that mean you're actively, and I'm not taking, giving anybody a hard time that's reading a verse from a Bible app. I'm, that's not my intent. Um, but if all we're doing is just looking at like one verse from something, are we really studying? Johnny wants to say something back here, Matt. Other side of the room. Are you really, are you really digging in? And, you know, I read on my Bible, but for me personally, I do so much better when I've got a hard copy of the Bible that I'm reading from. So if I want to make notes or anything else, I do that. Johnny. All of us that are Christians here realize it takes all five steps for us to obey God and become a Christian. There are five obligations we have each Lord's Day when we come together. All five of those are important. To leave either one of them out would not be pleasing to God. Okay, good point. Yeah, and, and there are specific acts of wor worship. And I think that the point that I'm trying to make, and thank you for saying that, but is the fact that a lot of times we as participants in that service don't give the attention to the things that are going on uh, like we should. So that, that's part of the point that I was going to make. Um, and, you know, another comment that was made was sometimes the only scripture reading that anybody ever is exposed to is when they hear it in a public assembly. And if that's the case, that's a sad situation. Uh, take your Bibles. Why is it important for us to read? What does it say in 2 Timothy 3, 16, 17? All Scripture is given by the inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. God gives us everything that we need to know. We read scripture for all of us to be encouraged by that in a public way. But we also should do it in a private way as well. 1 Peter 2 and 2. 1 Peter 2 and 2 says, As newborn babes desire the pure milk of the word that you may grow thereby. That applies to public reading of scripture, desiring to hear what is being read, thinking about it, meditating on it, but also doing that in a, in a private way as well. How can we do better as readers of God's word? What are your, what are your thoughts there? How can we do better as readers of God's word? Start somewhere. Just do it. As the old saying goes, Nike, Joanna, what you got? Here's a microphone. I think it's really helpful to do it with someone else because if you're by yourself, you can get busy and discouraged and just forget. But if you're with someone else, they're holding you accountable and even just reading it with them is just really powerful and you get really close to other people doing that too. That's a great point. Personal Bible studies where it's a couple of people and you're studying together and you're reading together. You got Jenks? remember that this is the regenerative power of God. I think sometimes we forget that. We think of it just, well, we're reading. They wrote, read in the Old Testament. We read in the New Testament. What's the big difference between right. it? Is it something special? No, it's the gospel is the power of God unto salvation. And Peter says in chapter 1, just before the passage you just read, right. that it is the seed that regenerates. We're born again, not of per perishable seed, but of the imperishable seed the living word of God that's what gives us life and if we remember I want to live in Christ I want to be filled with the spirit I want to understand who God is better read his word because that's where it starts good point and I've got Donna down here and then Matt over there yeah go ahead Donna Right. Donna was talking about goals and specific things that you're going to read on a regular basis. Back over to Matt. I, I, I definitely think, I mean, I, I know it helps me when I specifically say I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. I've got a specific thing that I'm working through in trying to regenerate myself, and that's a good scripture to point out too. Matt? 
I think one thing that we need to consider is in 2 Timothy 2, verse 15, Paul exhorts uh, Timothy to carefully handle Scripture. I think part of carefully handling, handling Scripture is reading Scripture through preconceived uh, lenses or reading uh, a verse uh, with um, an idea that you have already uh, understood all of this or using verses out of context and cherry picking verses to make your understanding of the scripture what you want it to be rather than what God wants it to be. Reading scripture through the historical context and reading it through the context in which Paul, uh, Peter, because they were, you know, moved by the Holy Spirit to write this is the best way to look and carefully handle scripture. And I think you see that in Luke 4, like you mentioned with Jesus. He sees this scroll uh, of Isaiah and he applies what he is about to do with that scripture. He is carefully handling the scripture to make sure that people understand what it means. That's a good point. That's a good point too. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, we've got to... We've got to, when we're preparing ourselves as readers, we've got to do the best we can to take time for it. We have to make time for it. We, does everybody have a busy schedule? I don't care what place in life you're in, whether you're just getting started or you're retired or going to retire, or what, you've got to make time for it because if you don't make time for it, it won't get the attention that it does. So I just made a few points about, you know, some of the things that y'all were talking about. And then the other thing that we can think about with regard to how can we be better listeners when something's read? How can we be better listeners when public scripture is read? Bill? Literacy problem. Right. He's going to give you the microphone now. But anyway, I was just sitting here and I got to thinking about um, when I was a child. Okay. Um, how uh, my mom would read me a short story sometimes, or not just me, but I had sisters too. Right. And I can remember. But you were the favorite. Yeah. yeah right. And. Uh, but I can remember I didn't want her to stop. And I think that's, I, I, I can see that in these people. Okay, good they point. Wanted, they wanted to hear more and more and more. And it, but it makes a question in my mind, are we really that way about scriptures as we was these little nursery rhymes and these little stories that we used to hear when we was a child? Yeah. Because we couldn't read then, so we can totally relate to what it was like to have it read to you. Right. So Good anyway, point. it, ju it yeah. was just in my hunger, mind. hunger for the word. Yes, hunger yeah. for the word. Yeah. And again, we can't let the fact that we've got it allow us to be numb to that fact and not desire it. it like we read the scripture that says, "Desire it like babes desire the milk." So, you know, we need to do everything that we can to make sure that we are the best listeners that we can be. So, wh what do you do to be a good listener, James? Practical application. So when we hear a scripture read, we need to think about how it applies to our individual life and how I can take something and do something with it. That's, that's what we've got to be focused on. Whoops, I didn't mean to do that. Let's go back. Uh, Proverbs 2, 1 through 13, here's the thought. Wisdom comes to those that seek it. Our heart must be applied to understanding, seeking wisdom through the knowledge of God. If we receive God's word and treasure his commandments within us, then we're going to have, we'll hear what he has to say with wisdom. We'll understand it. We'll try and apply it best we can. Back to the, back to the reading, though. Sometimes it helps if you read along with the reader up front. It helps you focus a little more and concentrate and less distraction. You follow what I'm saying? Yes. Read along with them. Yeah. So the script, when the script, and that's, you know, for the readers, what can they do? I mean, if I'm reading a scripture, I want to try and give people time to be able to find the scripture so they can read along with me. It's Proverbs 21, 1 through 3. That's Proverbs 21, 1 through 3. And then give everybody time to find it. They might want to even mark it in their Bible. Uh, so anyway, Stephanie, you good? Okay. We will be on lesson uh, 2.6, I guess it is.
on Wednesday night. Thanks for everybody's comments and attention this morning.